a 24 hour digital quartz clock it displays the uh, the time in 24 hour notation and it has a, uh, a control panel for setting the time uh, manually um, and it is built using uh, 7400 logic ICs there's no microcontrollers here um, to it is driven by a quartz crystal we'll go through the circuit in more detail in a bit the uh, the time is set manually when you turn it on it just goes to zero uh, this, the time is set manually using these three three buttons uh, to manually change the hour and minute uh, sections um, and uh, you know, let's walk through the circuit so the circuit starts on the far left here where um, there is the quartz uh, crystal right over there hard to see there it is there is a little quartz uh, crystal that is a it's a citizen watch crystal with a 32,768 uh, hertz frequency resonance frequency uh, that is hooked up to this IC which is a 74 4060, which is a combined uh, timing circuit with a 14 stage ripple counter. Um, so that gets the crystal to oscillate and then it divides the, uh, the frequency of the pulse down 14 times and that gets us to 2 hertz, precisely 2 hertz. Um, we want to go to 1 hertz and, uh, and so we need a, an additional frequency divider. Um, which we do here, this second IC um, is a, uh, a dual uh, D-type flip-flop um, it is a uh, 74HC74 um, and that then divides the signal down to 1 Hertz now, um, we need, so we need 15 stages because 2 to the power 15 is 32,768 which is precisely the frequency of the crystal. So this this white wire now gives us a nice one hertz uh, frequency, a timing uh, frequency, and that goes. If we follow it all the way down, goes all the way to the other side of the uh, of the circuit here. So here it comes in there um, into this IC, the second IC. Uh, and that is the uh, that is a uh, a decade counter, a dual decade counter, ripple counter, um, and so it counts from zero to nine, and then it rotates back to zero on this on this side here. And so the input here is the one hertz clock signal. It's a uh, uh, a three and seventy four three ninety. The output of a decade counter here um, are these four blue lines at the back here um, they output a binary number a, uh, a binary coded decimal um, that um, goes from 0 to 9 as I said it doesn't go all the way to 16 it's four lines uh, because of decade the output lines go to the first IC here uh, which is a 74 uh, 4511, which is a uh, binary coded decimal to seven segment display driver uh, chip. And so it takes the four input lines, the binary coded decimal, um, and then turns that into the right pattern on the seven segment display here to show that number in decimal. Now, the counter here uh, goes all the way up, as I said, to 9, and then it loops around back to uh, 0, as you can see there. Um, and um, uh, what we want to do then is we want to you know, drive the second display here and tick that up by 1. Now, the way that that works is that um, this uh, 390 counter, um, has, as I said, has two stages, or it's, it's a dual one. The one at the bottom here um, drives the other display the and uh, so it is connected to the IC right next to it this one which is also a display driver identical to the 
uh, IC on the far right. Um, that one is hooked up to the you know, second display, and um, its uh, input, uh, the yellow wires, come from the other side of the counter. Now, the input clock, it's this red wire here that causes the second display to tick, um, is then connected to um, an AND gate. It's the output of an AND gate over here, this I see here in the middle. That one is a standard quad uh, AND gate. The uh, and the input um, are these two blue wires which are hooked up to these two uh, lines of the the first counter. Now the what we want to do is that when the first uh, display hits nine, um, or rather when it hits ten, when it loops. We want to send a, a pulse to the input of the second counter, and that's what this does. Uh, the number nine uh, in binary is one zero zero one, um, and uh, and so what we're looking for is the first and the last bit to become high. So that runs to this AND gate, and so the red wire comes out. And that then feeds into the um, the input there, uh, the, the clock input. And so when we get to nine, these go high. Um, and so therefore the reset uh, pulse uh, or the, the, the clock pulse goes high here. Um, then nothing happens yet. Uh, it isn't until we loop back from nine to zero that these then go to zero and therefore the red wire goes to zero that triggers a falling edge um, which is uh, the which is used as the uh, clock pulse for the second counter and so that then causes the second counter to increase so now we uh we have this thing counting carrying uh, but it will go all the way up to 100 and we want to reset it when it gets to uh, 60. Uh, so 59 is the highest and then should loop back to zero. So to do that, we need to reset, manually reset the counter. It's this green wire. This green wire uh, provides a, uh, a reset uh, to that display. Now, when, when do we want to reset? We want to reset it when the, uh, the number goes from five to six. And we do that by uh, looking at the the, or finding the pattern for six on the uh, uh, on the counter output. Um, that's these two lines, uh, and so it's zero uh, one one zero. That goes through this through these blue wires, also back to the end chip, the end gate, where um, we uh, end them together, and out comes the green line, and so that is fed into the reset signal there. And so when we reach uh, five and we tick to six, then uh, this gives a little pulse and that resets the counter. And so now we count all the way up to uh, 59 and then at 59, we reset back to zero. Also, when we do reset back to zero, we want the next stage, the minute stage to increase. Now, the this whole second stage works very similar to the first stage. So remember the first stage had um, a counter chip, a dual counter chip in the middle at 390, and then two uh, 4511 uh, seven segment display drivers, this chip and this chip. The, the next one down here was just an AND gate, quad AND gate that we need for all the carry and reset operations. And so the next three chips on this breadboard um, are in a, uh, a copy of the first section. So this one here is a uh, decade counter a dual contextual counter, and these two are display drivers for the mi uh, minute section. It works uh, very much the same. The uh, clock signal for the uh, for the counter here is the is connected to the reset signal of the uh, minute display. And the reset signal was uh, the green wire here. Um, that comes out of that end gate. We have another wire out coming out of that end gate, that same wire. That's the white wire here, which um, 
makes its way through this control panel, which we'll get to in a bit, and ultimately comes out here as the blue wire and feeds in as the clock input for the minute display. Now the rest is very similar. Um, it also counts to uh, uh, 60 and then resets. Um, and the, the reset pulse uh, here, here is the, that is the reset uh, line. Um, we want to use that reset line uh, to uh, pr uh, work as, an, uh, as the clock input for the hour display. And so what happens here is that white wire um, comes out, also runs through the control panel, um, and then ultimately comes out as this blue wire, and it goes over here and serves as the clock input for the third and final stage. Again, this stage works very similar to the other ones. It is three chips, um, the one in the middle. Here is the, uh, the dual decky counter, and then to the left and to the but to the right and to the left are um, display drivers, the 4511s. They are hooked up to this display. Now, there is a difference, uh, a slight difference here, because this display needs to count to 24 and then reset, not to 60. Um, and the way that that works is somewhat similar uh, in that, first off, there is the, the regular uh, carry logic where these two white wires uh, look for the number nine that carries or runs through a an AND gate so this chip is a similar quad AND gate um, and uh, that's this white wire feeds in here as the clock pulse for the second display and so that makes it count to 100 and then to get the the reset on 24 what we do is we we scan for the pattern 24 and so we have to look at both counters at the same time. Now, the number 24 in binary is 0010, that's the first four lines, which is two um, in BCD, and then the second digit uh, is, one zero, uh, is, is 0100, um, so the, the second line is high. Um, the, it turns out that that pattern um, of the second bit of the first number being high and the third bit of the uh, first number being high um, only occurs for the number 24. And so we can ignore all the other lines, all the other bits, and just put an end on those two lines. And that, that, that's those two green lines. So if we look for that one line on the low order uh, and the green uh, line here, this, this line on the high order. That runs through an end gate uh, that provides a uh, reset signal for us. And that reset signal then goes to both uh, counters because it's a, it'll be at 23 and then it ticks over to 24 and we need to reset both of them. Um, and so that is being done uh, here through these, the white and the yellow lines coming out of that AND gate going to both sides of that chip. So that gives us the uh, the logic that drives the uh, the clock and counts all the way up to 24 and then back down and then uh, resets uh, again. So now we turn it on, it'll be at any random number or actually it'll be at zero and so we need to set the time first. And that is done through this control panel. Um, the there, is, there are three buttons here. As I said, the, the most left one is used to manually bump the hours uh, one by one and the uh, middle one is used for the minutes and the one on the right is a button to enable these two. Normally these are disengaged and so I can click them and nothing happens. Uh, the clock just works um, and so you have to press the one on the right first to enable these two buttons. Uh, it's very common in older digital clocks. And so I can show you, if I press the one on the right, with the time button, I now engage the, uh, the minute and hour button. And if I click the minute button, I can increment the minutes here one by one. And similar for the hours, if I move over to the hour button here, I can increase that as well. 
Uh, this also disengages the regular uh, clock pulse, and so when the seconds uh, ultimately reaches 60, it doesn't increment the minutes. There we go, um, which is handy because you are uh, manually setting the time here. Then I'll let go of the time button and uh, the clock carry mechanism is engaged again. So the way that, that works is that we looked earlier at these two white lines, which are the clock pulses for the minutes and the hours respectively, and they run through the circuit. So normally what happens when you don't click any buttons, that runs through unimpeded. So if we look at the white line um, coming from the uh, uh, from the, the seconds and providing the clock for the minutes, it's this line that goes in here, the white line, it runs through this IC, which is a hex inverter with a Schmidt trigger. And so this wire, which is normally low, because it's the reset signal, uh, it's normally low, runs through the inverter, becomes high, it's this blue wire here, um, and that one ends up here, it's this one, and ends up in this IC, which is a 74157, which is a, a quad two-line multiplexer. What a multiplexer does is it takes two lines of input, in this case it's the white line, white wire here, and that blue wire uh, here next to it, and uh, it selects one of these two lines as its output. So the output in this case is this blue wire. The This line here is the control line and that uh, determines which one is active, the first or the second line. And it's got four of those stages. Now, the uh, normally the uh, line that is active uh, is the, uh, the second one, the blue one here, which is the input line here. And so normally we just have the uh, reset line from the seconds becoming high, becomes the blue line over here, and that goes out because it's connected to this line. So this is also high, and that high signal uh, becomes the input for this clock. Right? The fact that it's high doesn't mean anything. Uh, doesn't make anything tick. The it is the rising edge of the signal that makes the uh, the decade counter tick. Now, when I click the uh, button here, the time button, um, that controls this line over here, and so it now selects the other signal, and the other signal is wired up directly to these buttons. Um, and so, if you look at the minute button, for instance, that is this yellow wire, and this is just a debouncing circuit, that goes over here also to a, the uh, inverter with Schmidt trigger. Uh, normally this uh, yellow line is low, goes through the inverter, and then it becomes high, and it becomes this white, uh, white line, this white wire, this one, and so it is this line here. So it is high also normally when you don't press a button, and so when you select, when you click time, then you go from one high to the other high. So uh, nothing just happens just yet here. Now when I click the menu button, uh, the minute button, um, I'm uh, putting a high signal on the yellow wire, which after the inverter becomes low, and so the I'm now outputting a low signal on this blue wire. And uh, that trick is the falling edge that we need for the counter to tick. The hours work exactly the same way. Uh, same debouncing circuit, same inversion, um, and runs out through here. So we don't use the other half of the 157. Um, let's see, what else do we have left? The only thing left here is this little circuit on the left, which is... Um, a pulse width modulator the uh, to control the brightness of the uh, of the circuit see it here we turn that we can make it really dark we can make it really bright uh, the way that, that works is that the common cathode of each of these seven segment displays um, all run through the blue uh, ground line here of all these breadboards. Um, they're not actually ground, they're just connected. Um, and then uh, they come out here in this black wire which feeds into 
the collector of that little uh, transistor uh, and drains out there to actual ground. Now the transistor itself is uh, controlled by this uh, 555 timer. And there it is, the 555 timer, which is um, uh, oscillating at 500 hertz, uh, half a kilohertz, and um, the resistors are uh, wired up, or the, the resistor is the uh, the pot, and um, the uh, it's wired up in such a way that the one half of the pot is used for uh, charging the capacitor, and the other half is used to discharge the capacitor. And since we always use the full width of the uh, of the pot, the total. Uh, cycle time or frequency of the timer is is static the will we turn the knob uh, we merely change the ratio of discharge versus uh, charging and so we effectively modulate the duty cycle but not the frequency we can modulate all the way down to about one percent uh, and that concludes the circuit uh, so a digital clock driven by a quartz uh, crystal uh, turning into a one hertz signal that runs through a series of uh, uh, decade counters uh, and uh, display drivers for seven segment displays with a manual control panel to manually overwrite the counting and set the, the time manually through these clock pulses. Uh, and then finally a uh, pulse width modulator for the display brightness. And no microcontrollers. That's it.